Welcome to Resolver Ballot. Over the last 20 years, Ballot has helped clients perform risk assessments and risk assessment workshops more effectively and efficiently. Traditional risk assessments are often prone to group decision-making biases that limit the accuracy of the insights gained. Ballot is an anonymous voting tool that allows you to eliminate these biases, benefit from equal representation, and encourage candid responses. The result is an accurate exchange of information, improved communication, and more efficient and accurate risk assessments. Ballot isn't limited to just risk assessments. It can be used to optimize any group decision-making process, such as strategic planning, procurement, HR management, control assessments, project management, and more. In this video, we'll introduce you to Ballot and show you how to set up and configure the tool for your next workshop. Ballot can be downloaded from our customer portal. The first time you launch the application, you will be prompted to enter the access code and password that has been provided to you. Once open, you'll have a few options. Creating a new file from scratch or with a template. You can browse through sample files for some insight into how to create a file. You can open up one of the last 10 files that you've previously worked on, or you can browse your computer to open up other files. Ballot files are saved in a proprietary file format called .rbf for resolver ballot file, which can only be opened within the ballot application. Let's start by taking a look at some of the sample files to see how things are set up. Once selected, in a new window, you can select the sample and see a description for each type. Once a file is selected, you'll notice a warning indicating that the files are auto-saved. So it's best practice to save the template as a new file so as not to modify the template. We'll start with a quick navigation. Across the top are three primary tabs that allow for a variety of functionality. File contains many of the basic file options such as open, save as, print, and so on. With regards to saving, just note that all files are saved automatically in real time, hence no actual save button. But the save as does allow you to save new formats of an existing file so as not to overwrite the data of that existing file, just as we did a moment ago with this new sample file. From the design tab, we can begin to configure the workshop by adding session details, items, criteria, formulas, and configuring the overall color scheme and appearance. There is also a guide on the right-hand side of the screen that contains quick links to some of the key functionality in the process of our assessment. Here, the items and criteria buttons allow you to jump to the only two mandatory fields from the tabs across the top that we'll need to complete in order to perform our assessment. The vote area allows you to set up your session for web voting or keypads prior to the session. Count, where you can tell the application how many participants you're expecting within the session. And finally, the vote option, where you can actually start the session. In the report area, there's a quick link to view a heat map for your reporting needs. For this session, we're going to focus on the tabs across the top so we can see all of the features and functionality of the ballot application, starting with the session area. Here, we can add a session label and a statement to define the purpose for the session or workshop as a way of managing the discussion. As just mentioned, the two principal elements for every file are the items and criteria, which we're going to look at next. First are the items. Items will be the context that you'll be evaluating during the workshop. In this example, the different risks we're going to be examining. The item text is the actual text or risk that the participants will see on the voting screen. The item label can be used as an abbreviated concise description of the item. And this will be visible in the legend of the heat map in reference to the risk, as well as on reports and graphs. These could be objectives where items are associated with that objective or business units or categories. It's basically just a means of bucketing the items in a useful manner. The item type allows you to categorize your items. These are also used to create link reports, which can indicate relationships between items at different levels of a hierarchy. This differs from the label, which could also be used for categorizing items, as the type enables calculations to be run on aggregate scores on the items within each group. Similarly, new item groups allow you to add some structure to categorize and group your items. After items have been added, you can click and drag to reorder the list if required. Just note that this change will also be reflected within the vote and report screens that will be seen during the actual session. You can also add multiple items at once by copying an existing ordered list from Word, Excel, or other text editors. Then, at the top of the screen, click the Paste Items button. 
If you have a list already started and you are adding additional items via this method, the pasted items will appear at the bottom of the list and again could be clicked and dragged into the appropriate order as needed. Next is the criteria. Criteria are measures on which items are voted. Within Ballot, there are four types of criteria, rating scale, paired ranking, multiple choice, and relationship modeling. With rating scale, responses are made using a scaling method of 2 to 10 items, where responses are ordered by some magnitude, such as high, medium, and low, strongly agree, agree, neither agree or disagree, and so on, and the same rating scale will be applied to all items within a file. Rating scales are used when multiple concepts need to be assessed or evaluated. In the case of a risk assessment, evaluate the risks on likelihood of occurrence, impact if they were to occur, and the ability to mitigate their effect. Paired ranking is a technique whereby a group of people assess multiple items in a ranked order on the basis of just one criteria. So rather than asking a group to rank eight items in order of importance, the question can be rephrased to ask if A is more important than B, then is C more important than D, and so on. And this process is continued until a ranked order for the entire list can be created. Another option is multiple choice. This is similar to a rating scale as responses are made to an item with two to 10 choices. Here though, for a multiple choice question, the same response choices are not applied to every item. So multiple choice answers could be similar to a rating scale in the sense of strongly agree, agree, and so on. But in this case, they apply to just one item as opposed to all items within the file. Typical instances of using multiple choice could include opinion surveys, town hall style meetings, training or education sessions, and so on. Relationship modeling differs as this criteria seeks to get a consensus on the cause and effect of relationships of various items. Similar to paired ranking, participants are presented with pairs of items, and the facilitator asks if the first item is the cause of the second, or if it has an effect on the second. The result of this process is to create a network diagram of relationships between all items within the original list. Since the setup will vary a little, you can click on the help button for step-by-step -step instructions on how to add each criteria type. For our sample risk assessment, we have gone with a rating scale type criteria. For this, we need to enter the criteria text, the label, which will also be visible on our heat map and charts, and then the scale values, as we can see here, of catastrophic, severe, major, moderate, or minor. Next is the stakeholders. This area can be used to identify the different groups that your participants belong to. For this and for the sake of anonymity, you'll need more than three people per group. But if used, results from the session can then be broken down by stakeholder group in the voting session or in post-workshop reporting. The formula section allows you to add calculations that will be based on the votes received during the session. These can be simple totals and averages or more complex functions. Once a formula has been created, it will be applied to all items within the file. Views can be created to filter ballot files by items and criteria. This enables facilitators to retain large ballot files that may contain many items and or criteria. In essence, you have one master file rather than smaller distinct files for different groups. With this, you can only show specific items and criteria on a voting screen rather than the longer list, which may not be relevant to all participants. In this view section, we can add a new view by clicking on the Add button and naming the view. Then we can head back to the Items tab. At the top of the window, select this new view from the drop-down list. Next, we can click the Select Items button. Items in this current custom view will be listed on the right-hand side of the window. By default, this would include all items from our current file. To filter out the items you don't want in this view, Check the box in the Remove column beside the items that you do not want in this view, and then click the Remove button. If needed, we can also add these items back to the view by selecting them from the left-hand side of the screen and clicking the Add button. Throughout this process, though, they'll be added to the bottom of the list, so you may need to restructure the order of this list, again, by clicking and dragging as needed. The Quick Query section is a great way to ask participants questions that are outside of the mandate of the rest of the session. These could be icebreakers or used as a way to get participants familiar with the voting process, whether it be via keypads or web voting. 
These will always be multiple choice and can be created either prior to the session or on the fly from the voting screen. Finally, within the tools area, this is where you can configure the appearance for the default file with regards to colors and font, as well as the voting screen and charts. This brings us to the end of our first video on Resolver Ballot. Our second video will take a closer look at the actual voting screens where we go into the actual use of Resolver Ballot during a session.